What's going on everybody? Blockade Runner here from Indecision Studios and today I'm here to give you some beginner tips on how to use the new iPi Mocap Studio. I'll show you how to create a simple animation using a single Microsoft Connect, then how to transfer it to a custom 3D human rig. So let's get started. After you've installed your Connect, go ahead and open up the iPi recorder. The first screen you'll come to will be the Devices menu. This will show you what recording devices you have presently attached to your PC. Go ahead and select your Connect and hit the Setup button. The first thing I would recommend you change is the View panel. So hover over the Video field, then go down and select the Depth plus Color option. This way, while you're setting up your device and recording, you can see both your video and the depth information, which is very important. Also, feel free to go check out the Properties menu. Here you can actually angle your Connect up and down to get a better view. Always use this method instead of manually cranking the Connect. All that's going to do is wear it out. When setting up your Connect, make sure you have enough room to fit in your whole body from head to toe in the frame. The minimum size requirements for your workspace is usually 9 by 5 feet, but I was able to fit my 6 foot tall frame completely in the scene, only being 8 feet away from the connect, so it really all depends on your height. Once your connect is in place and framed to your body, now we should optimize our scene for depth so the connect can get the best scan possible. To do this, we need to get rid of as much yellow as possible. The main areas you really need to address are the floor and yourself once you're in the scene. So throwing a blanket down to cover the yellow spots in this scene is really all you would have to do to get a really decent scan. But I like to get my scene as yellow free as possible. So all I'm going to do is hang a sheet over the door and another over my desk. Now when looking at the scene, there is very minimal yellow. Also keep in mind that the Kinect does not like natural light, so make sure all the windows are covered. Once you optimize your scene for depth, now is the time to actually build the background. Now, what this does is actually very simple. This will take a mental picture of your background. That way, when something new, like yourself, enters the scene during the recording process, it will know that you're the true star of the show, but just be sure you have your connect exactly where you want it. Because once you build the background, even if you bump your connect a tiny bit, you'll have to rebuild it all over again before you record. It's not a big problem, but it's just more of a pain. So now is the time to kick the kids and the animals out of the room. Then, when you're ready, just click the background button, then evaluate. After your background has been evaluated, now it's time for the fun part recording your animation. So go ahead and click the record button. But before you start, you can come here and change your destination folder and even set a delay. But once you're ready, go ahead and click start. Make sure to go into a solid T pose before you start your animation moves. Once you're done, Go ahead and click Stop. Now it's going to present you with a file path. When you hover over it, it'll either let you view it in their built-in viewer, or you can hit S to send it right to MoCap Studios. So let's do that. When your capture is imported into MoCap Studio, the first thing you need to do is create your actor. So under Actor Parameters, select either male or female, then specify your height, by adjusting the slider accordingly. Height is a very important step, so try to be precise. If you need help converting to meters, there are many converters online that can help. Once your actor is generated, the next thing we want to do is edit out the parts of the video where I'm walking in and out of the scene. So I'm going to grab the video slider and adjust it to where I'm just starting to break out of my T pose. That way the animation starts with a solid pose. Alright, now let's go down and drag both the region of interest and the take bars from the left over to where you stop the video. 
it should nicely snap into place. Now, let's play the rest of the animation and stop it again once you break out of the animation and start heading towards the camera. We want the last frame to be a solid stance. Now let's drag both bars, this time from the right side, over to the end of the video. Now we have to line up our actor with the depth information that we captured. To help us do this, we have a few tools at our disposal. We have the Move tool, the Rotate tool, and an IK tool. We can also toggle the skin video and depth information on and off. So let's get the Move tool. We first need to line up the actor. Okay, now from here on out, I'm actually going to turn off my video and work only in 3D space. We can actually pull him forward. Make sure to keep going back to the front to make sure he's lined up. Now, you don't have to be extremely precise. The main thing is that your refit pose, which is the next step, should give you a good result. All right, that looks pretty good on height and positioning. So we're gonna go over here to actor and I'm going to raise his body mass index up a little bit because I'm kind of a bigger guy. I'm not going to touch his height though. Turn to the side and adjust my belly. Okay, now let's switch to the IK tool. This allows me to actually select the feet and bring them over so they actually line up with my depth information a little bit better. There we go, now bring this guy over. There we go. Now you can grab the hands as well, make sure they line up. Same with the other side. Now that we have fully adjusted this actor's height and size to fit ours, we can actually come over here and save the actor as a file. That way it's always available for us to load into any project from here on out. Then let's go to the tracking tab and select refit pose. This will readjust your actor from its current position to fit the depth information as closely as possible. As long as your character doesn't bend in half or show any major deformities, then you did well enough. When you're ready, now we want to select Track Forward. What this does is it plays the selected portion of the animation through, and on every frame, it's essentially baking the actor onto the depth information. This can take a few minutes depending on how long your animation is, so I'm going to pause the video here until it's complete. Now that the process is complete, let's turn off the depth information and check out just how well the actor tracked. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the animation is a bit shaky, but that's to be expected. That's when you want to come over here to the Jitter Removal options. This will help smooth out the animation. There is an option box to tweak the settings, but for the most part, the default settings work just fine. So let's go ahead and hit Apply. This can also take a few minutes, so I will once again pause the video here. Alright, Jitter Removal is complete, so let's hit Play and see how we did. Excellent. The animation is smoothed out and looking great. Now it's time to get this guy into Maya. So go ahead and select the Export tab. Here, all we have to do is hit Export Animation and select what format you want it exported as. Since I'm going into Maya, I'm going to choose the Motion Builder option. then choose FBX. And off to Maya we go. With the internal motion transfer system, you can essentially retarget motions to any human rig, no matter what 3D package you're using for the animation. To do so, go to File, 
import target character, then bring in any rigged model. In the export menu, you'll now see a column of source bones and one of target bones. What you need to do is match the source bone from the actor to the bone in your model that you want the animation replicated to. This is where knowing how you've built and named your imported rig really pays off. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll let you watch as I retarget one half of the model, since the other side is the same thing anyway. Alright, well after all that, the animation is working, and better yet, I've got some better news for you. Now, you can go up and save those bone assignments as a profile. That way, as long as you keep bringing in rigs that have the same bone naming structure, you never have to go through that process again. After the motion is transferred, you can then export the animation into most popular formats for further use in any 3D package. That's it folks, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and again, if you're interested in trying the software for yourself, go to their website and download the free one month trial. All links are in the video description below. Until next time, this is the one and only Blockade Runner, signing off.